Morning first years, I hope you're keeping well. Um, so today's lesson guys is a very very important one. We're going to be learning about our first artist in the Renaissance and that person is called Leonardo da Vinci. He's probably the most famous um, artist probably in history and probably the most famous mind. He's actually much more than an artist. He was brilliant at lots of things that he put his um, mind to and that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Now guys, if you look um, at your OneNote, so we're going to be in the Renaissance tab. If you open up the Renaissance tab and over here you will see um, number five Renaissance painting. You open it up, it will look like this. Okay, I want you to scroll down a little bit guys. And I want you to come to um, Special Study Famous Renaissance Painters. Now we're in the second tab here, which is Leonardo da Vinci. Okay, you can stop and pause this guys um, whenever you need to as well. Um, and you can go to it obviously in your tablet on your own time as well. Um, we're going to be putting some notes into our notes copies for this as well, guys. So um, what I want you to do is to um, give a new page in your copy and just print the heading as it is up on the top of the page there, Leonardo da Vinci. Okay, Leonardo da Vinci. Okay, so we'll go to the points. Now, the only bits I want to take down, guys, are what I underline here. So, Da Vinci was one of the greatest painters of the Renaissance, probably the greatest painter and probably the most well-known painter. Um, he was born, I might get you to take down a second point, he was born in a little town called Vinci near Florence. That's what his name means. So, Leonardo da Vinci essentially means Leonardo from Vinci. And that's what he became known as. Um. His father had always wanted him to be a lawyer. He wanted him to go on to become a lawyer, but Leonardo never had an interest in that. He was much more interested in painting. He was always painting nearly 24-7. And as what usually happens then, his dad um, helped him then to actually um, follow on with his painting. And he got him uh, to work with uh, as an apprentice to a well-known artist. So the artist he became, so Leonardo became an apprentice and he starts to work with a painter called Verrocchio from um, Florence. Now Verrocchio painted that picture on the right hand side. So um, it's called a painting of the Virgin and Jesus. Now um, as what usually happens when an artist is training a young painter, they'll get the young painter to paint one part of this picture. So I'm going to have to zoom in the picture now guys. Okay, so this is a Verrocchio painting. And just for a couple of seconds have a look at the picture and see, Leonardo painted one thing in this, or one aspect of this painting. What do you think Leonardo painted? Okay. If you had said he painted those angels, you'd have been correct. That's what Leonardo did. So Verrocchio um, let him carry on with that. And when he saw how good, like even if you compare, it's kind of hard to tell the light, guys. If you compare the skin color, in the angels compared to Jesus next to him, it's a lot more realistic. Baraccio never painted again after this. He realized this boy that I'm training here is a genius. I can't be that good. And he actually spent the rest of his life trying to help Leonardo da Vinci to become um, the best painter that he could be. Now going back to the main part, it became clear after a while that Leonardo was even better than his master. Okay, so carrying on to the next slide, guys. When Florence became involved in the war, Leonardo moved to um, Milan. So Florence was going through a dark period for a while because of a war. So he moved to Milan. Now there he painted his most famous painting, which was called The Last Supper. So I might get you um, to take down that point, guys. So here, instead of here, you could say in Milan, he painted his famous painting, The Last Supper on the Walls of a Church. That's it there. Now painting on a wall, it's a very, very famous painting. Painting on a wall is called a fresco. So this is an example of a fresco, and it's probably the most famous painting that there is. If you go into the cathedral in Milan, it's in that picture still there. The painting is still there covering the whole back wall of the cathedral, and you can go and um, see it. And it's really, really um, impressive um, work. Um, it was a fresco. But unfortunately, Leonard had tried a different type of paint in this, and it didn't work very well. And um, even in Leonardo's lifetime, it started to peel. So um, continuously, since it has been painted nearly 500 years ago, and they're continuously having to redo parts of it because it is um, peeling. Um,
So here, just to show you an example, guys, and um, if I can zoom in there, that's the way the painting um, went. It really started to fade. The new painting technique didn't work, and they've been restoring it for years, and they've got it to a point, and it took 20 years for them to um, restore this. And that's it there, so you can see much clearer um, in that um, picture. Okay, so back to our PowerPoint guys, that's the last supper, so make sure the bits that I really want you to kind of highlight from that guys is the last supper in the name of the painting. Uh, Leonardo was the first artist as well to use fumato, so um, I might get that down there, that's a keyword that will come across the last day. This fumato is a type of shadow, and he used that in the Mona Lisa, and the Mona Lisa will be his next famous um, painting. Okay, there's some other painting from a lady within our mind and the Virgin on the Rocks um, in more famous paintings. The Mona Lisa probably is the most um, famous. Um, I've shown you that picture loads of times, guys, so you understand what the Mona Lisa is. And the Mona Lisa is in um, Paris. Um, that's a self-portrait, actually, of himself. He painted a self-portrait. That's what Leonardo um, actually looked like. Now his notebooks, um, Leonardo wrote many notebooks. He kept hundreds of um, notebooks. And he actually wrote in mirror writing. So as you can see from there, so the only way to read the writing properly is to actually put it up against the mirror. And there's two reasons as to why he did this and we don't know exactly. Um, he was autistic. Um, so some believe that it was more comfortable for him to write like that. The more realistic reason is probably to safeguard his work. Because when you see me writing, you won't be able to understand it straight away. So he probably wants to protect his work. Um, so today, there are over 5,000 pages of his notebook, including diagrams of machines, as well as notes on botany, geology, and engineering. Let's have a go to the next slide. Um, he came up with uh, designs for a helicopter, parachute, and submarine now, years before they were ever invented. He had drawings of those in his um, note copies. Um, he also dissected dead bodies. He was very obsessed with um, with dead bodies. So, um, that's it's sort of to learn more about bodies. That's why he dissected um, dead ones. Some that he got permission to dissect, others that he didn't get permission to. Um, Dissect. And there's an example um, of him there, guys. So that's a facial. It's just him practicing his drawings, and this is a helicopter um, design. They did years before a helicopter was ever even um, invented. Um, this is his last ever portrait. Um, he lived quite a long life, um, but um, he did spend lots of time moving around. So he went to Florence and went to Rome, and he spent many of the rest of his life, m m much of the rest of his life or later life, in France. Which is why um the Mona Lisa is in France today. It's in um it's in the Louvre Museum in the centre of um France. Okay guys, so um we're also gonna be moving on to our books today. So if I can get you to um open them up for me, please. Now okay, guys, so in your books we're on page um, one hundred and two and we're starting down at the bottom, so right there. Now, I want to just have a quick read through it, guys. We're particularly the bits that are in bold. Make sure you understand the bits in bold. Now, some of that we would have come across on the um, PowerPoint that we were looking at a second ago. So you really need to be able to tell where Leonardo came from. Two or three of his famous painting works and the style that he used and um, why he's famous. So it'll explain all of that um, in a couple of pages here, guys. So we get to do that. And then moving on to page 104, it's going to talk about his notepads his later life and then I want you guys to finish off this class I want you to do questions one to six into your exercise copies okay any questions guys email me um it's no problem at all email me anytime okay 